Hi, my name is Jolene Ocello with the Mendocino Coast Audubon Society. The black ocean catcher is our rock star bird. We have, there's a few rock star birds, but they've definitely been in the limelight. Um, they're the most boisterous and loud, so they're very difficult to miss. The black oyster catcher is, I like to think it's uh, a bird of mind and heart. So for people who walk along the coast, often one of the uh, most repetitive sounds they hear is the black oyster catcher. The ke -ke 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 of the black oyster catcher, they don't even know what they're hearing or maybe they see the bird. And it's really a cool looking bird. It has, uh, I try to tell people it has uh, bright red lipstick, the bright eyeliner, red eyeliner, uh, nice black dress and pink pantyhose. And if you're good, you can get close enough to see their little black uh, nail polish on their toenails. Um, so behaviorally, they're very memorable. And when they're nesting, they're actually steadfast parents and they will work over time, night and day, switching uh, equally between male and female to take care of the, brood the eggs, um, or incubate the eggs, brood the young, and feed. Um, does climate change worry you at all in regards to the success of black oyster pictures along the coast? It's definitely something that uh, we're considering and it's part of the reason why we're studying the oyster catcher. They are an indicator species or keystone species of the intertidal zone. They rely on this area. They really only share it with, well, it's kind of interesting, they share it with three other birds. So the western gull, the pigeon guillemot, the pelagic cormorant. So they all have their own niches within this intertidal rocky zone and they all depend on their own types of food. The black oyster catcher depends on the mussel beds. Um, we do not have oysters here, so they don't eat the oysters, but uh, uh, limpets and worms, anything living within the rocky intertidal zone. And with climate change, if there actually is a rise in sea level, then a lot of their habitat will become inundated and they will have less um, at low tide to feed on. They are most active at low tide. That's when you can really see the black oyster catchers in, in action. And what would the coastline in Mendocino be without the oyster catcher? Kind of like this right now, very quiet. <laughs> um, I do have uh, one gal who gave us permission to go on her property to do the nest success survey, and she was floored by the idea that she had three nests in her backyard that she could see from her house. And once I told her, showed her the nest and there were eggs in it, she told me that every time she heard them, which was quite often, she would get up and look at the eggs, you know, to make sure everything was okay. And if anything happened, she would call me. And so that's the kind of response I get from people is that they really do realize this, is, this bird exists here. Um, whether they have it in their heart, they have it in their mind because they hear it. It's something that the average person can actually see and, um, and create a memory with for their visit, especially here on the Mendocino Coast, or even if you live by them, you really hear them. Now you know what's going on and it causes them to really you know, pay more attention to it.